What's up, guys? Welcome to part two. So we need to find an HDRI. I use Polyhaven because it's free. And you can just click here. This here actually is pretty nice. I think I like this. Uh, we'll go with this. So you just click download. Okay, we're inside Blender now. So to get the environment to look nice, you must go to shading. And like we were before inside of objects on the left side here, you switch that to world. Okay, you can delete this uh, gray background. Just click delete and click shift A to look up environment, environment texture. You want this, put this to the surface and open it up the file you just downloaded, which is an HDRI. And now look at this, boom. Uh, this nice, nice, clean looking background. And if you look at it, if you like rotate this, it has a different shade on different angles, right? To make importing Rust objects easier, you're going to need to download this uh, extension for Blender. So make sure to click the link in the description. Okay, now go to preferences. Click add-ons, make sure, make sure you click add-ons. I, I fucked up earlier. Click add-ons, click install, look it up on your desktop, wherever it was, and click the zip file. Make sure it's zipped up and you haven't extracted it. And then click install. All right, now click plus, whatever, to turn it on and click save preferences on the bottom. Then you can uh, close it up. All right, as the studio is done loading, cause that thing takes forever. When you look up mesh, we're gonna want to make our scene more interesting by adding uh, by adding items to it. So we're just gonna look up mini copter, and we're gonna go down the thingy. I, I tried this once already, and it didn't work with this LOD. So sometimes you have to do multiple imports or like not multiple imports. You must like find the right object sometimes, because this mini copter did not work for me actually. I'm gonna go back. It was the last one actually worked. It was like a mini copter dot entity. So sometimes you must have a little bit of a, a bit of a fight with Asset Studio since it's like doesn't work properly and it's really annoying. So uh let's take these real quick. The red ones and turn them blue with uh, this. So boom, done. You can already add add the mini copter into our blender scene. By clicking Rust Tools, Import Rust Model, find the folder wherever it is, the, the mini copter, and click Import Rust Model. Make sure it's a hundred scale as well, though. And boom, done. Looks already great. I I mean, we gotta take it. We don't have anything left. I guess we gotta take it. Box. Um, so let's see what else we can get. Import Rust models. Let's try the box first. I think this might be better luck. Oh, the when rotating it, it rotates weirdly like this. Actually, never mind. It's fine. Just type on R next ninety. All right, cool. All right, you have this already. Maybe the palm trees might work as well. This is actually pretty decent. Let's see how the palm trees look like. No promises on this one though. Oof. Gotta, gotta switch that real quick. Move this all out of the way. Put this to rendered. We have the main stuff we want here. Got the palm trees. They're all a little bit, all a little bit different. I'm pretty sure if you look at this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different palm trees. If you look at the shape of what they have, right? The bend is different. Anyway, all right. Um. Got a couple of rocks. I feel like it would be small, smarter. So in this clip, I had everything unorganized like this. So I had only one box thingy. So what you do is you go all the way down, you right click, you click new collection. Um, then you find it. I'm not sure where it went. It might've gone to top collection. Number two, call this maybe grass. For example, we have grass here and you can put all the grass you have. Uh, in this one collection. So it's easier to organize. Boom, it's all in this one collection and you can hide it all, which is nice. Same thing with the rocks. So right click, uh, new collection, 
rock. Grab the rock formation spoon. Put it in here. And behind that, those are the rocks. Just quickly, so there's a few stuff missing. Some maybe some uh, rocks or something, but that's fine. Get the point at all this. All right. So this is why we use collections to make it easier to organize. And the question is, is all right, there's something wrong. There's definitely something wrong. Um, I can tell that that much. I mean, we'll see. Maybe it's, maybe it's the big ones. Probably the big ones, right? The small ones should be fine, hopefully. Maybe these are fine? No, these are... I think something's wrong with the texturing here. What are these? What the... Oh, these are these rocks. I know these, actually. These are the ones that use the military tunnels and stuff. Actually, you know what? This might be perfect. We might be able to use this. I wonder if we can uh, fix this, though. Let me see the shading on this. What's making it red? That's my question. I think it's the specular, and the specular might be messed up. So if you can just delete... Yeah, it's the specular. You just got to delete the specular sometimes. All I did now is take the assets and compile it into a scene that made sense. And this is what we had left. Okay, you know what? I messed up. i am be honest, I messed up. So I'm just going to delete this real quick. Go back to this. Import Rust model. Where is this? Uh, make sure with that lumberjack has me, don't delete it, actually. As I said in the clip, I accidentally deleted the skeleton body for the hazmat, so I couldn't put it in like a different pose, you know? So what I'm showing you guys here is on the bottom part, you can go into pose mode. And in the bottom part here, you must show the bones in front. So it will be easier to understand. Also with this, it's easier to move one bone at a time to get your one in position. And if you want to select them all at once, just hit A. Um, so we're going to move them up and then we can take this. I'm just going to hit R to rotate, rotate this thing. Uh, can rotate the boots, take another, another thing. And when you're looking at this, this is the main reason I don't do animations in Blender since you have to move one bone at a time and make it mimic real life, which is incredibly hard. Even if you're really good at this, it looks somewhat fake this way a little bit right now move it down it's gonna be a little bit of a clipping mistake but most people don't notice that it's fine you can move it out the way a little bit it's just like this okay this looks cool okay it doesn't matter you know what it doesn't matter we'll make it look like this i, I don't want to i don't want to mess with the hands too long you know what i'm trying to say Okay, I'm, I'm going to quickly show you how to adjust the gam camera. So you're going to go to preferences, look up on the key map camera, and uh, get these two, view camera and line camera to view. So then I can click control shift A, I'm inside the camera, on the right side here, on the view, view button, you click camera to view, and then whenever you move, the camera moves at you, you know, and then you just adjust this to whatever you like. Maybe like something like this, right? And then you can uh, unclick this. Then you can uh, go to the left side here. On the top thing you click, you go to film and you click transparent. This makes the image transparent. So later on, you can add a quick background to the spots that has no background in it. And then you just click this, copy these options, click render and render image. And you see how there's like some stuff missing here. You can add that in Photoshop since it's, uh, you know, no background. Also, once again, before I leave you guys, I recommend watching the donut tutorial and getting the gist of the basics. So it's easier to follow this video. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one.